Hello guys, this is Fazan Ashraf from Professional Paper and today we are do, going to do a very interesting machine learning project on how to predict the percentage of marks of a student based on the number of hours they study. So let's begin. <coughs> so let us first see the main aim of our project. So the first main aim of, of our project is to predict the score of a student who studies for 9.25 hours a day. At the last of this lecture, you all would be able to predict or to put any desirable number of R for any student to predict their marks. Our second aim would be to predict the marks a student is expected to score based upon the number of R they study. Our third aim is to analyze how many students pass or failed. <coughs> so let's begin. So at first we have imported all the necessary module for our project that is NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib which is used for visualization, Seaborn, this module is also used for Visualization, SciPy, which is used for doing mathematical computation, <coughs> and rest all are from Scikit-learn, which is used to put our desirable <coughs> machine learning model in our project. Then we have imported our data set, that is the data set that that is a CSV file. As it is a CSV file, so we have used dot read CSV. Then I have printed a data frame here. Here you can see that <coughs> we have two column out here that is hours and scores. This is the number of hours a student studies and this is the scores a student get. That is a student who study for 2.5 hours get 21 marks. Let's first analyze the data. Here you can see that uh, at first I have seen <coughs> I've used dot shape and dot shape is used to tell us about the shape of our data frame that is how many rows and columns are there. Here 25 represent rows and 2 represent column that is there are total 25 rows and 2 columns. Using df dot column tell us the number the name of the columns in our data set. Using dot info method in the data frame tell us many information including the column names, the data type of the column, the to number of null values in the column. Here you can see that we have 25 null value in hours and 25 null value in scores. That is we have zero null values. Sometime getting the information about the number of null values is very beneficial for us so that we can do desirable changes in our data set or our data frame. So that we can do our visualization and training of data for machine learning more properly. Then I have used dot describe method, which is used for, <coughs> which is generally used for descriptive statistics analysis. Here you can see that we have got count, that is total number of rows. Mean, that is the mean. Our student studies, that is the on an average every student study five hours, and score that on an average every student get get fifty one marks. And rest all hours, you can see that max tell us the maximum number of R a student have studied, or uh, and the maximum number of score a student has scored. Then dot correlation method is being done by using dot core. It gives the correlation between the columns in the data frame. Then. We can also find the number of null values in a data frame using is null value. Here false represent <coughs> that the value in that <coughs> particular point is null is not null. And if the, this value would be true, it means that at this point in the data frame are there is no element and the value is null. Let me remind you again that to find the null value in a data frame is very necessary so that we can do proper manipulation in a data frame according to our needs. From the analysis we came to know that there is no null value so we do not need to do any thing on our own. Let's do some analysis. Here I have done, I have made a distribution plot of scores and as well as as well as I have the uh, join part below. So what is the distributive distribution plot? So a distribution plot depicts the variation in data distribution. It represents the overall distribution of continuous data variable. So keep in mind that to do any distribution plot, we should keep in mind that our variable data should be continuous. 
so a distribution plot draws a histogram and a line plot to to show the variation of our data then we have drawn a joint plot out here so what is the joint plot a joint plot give relation between two variables here we can see that we have used two variables and these two variables are nothing but the column of our data frame that is hours and score and the kind i've used is reg here reg represent regression and here you will see the question here this straight line tell us that the scores and hours are linearly correlated with each other that is if the number of hours studied by the student increases the scores by student also increases so <clears throat> let us go down and let us visualize how much score and hours are how much this score and hours are correlated and to do this rig plot that is regression plot is very awesome for uh, getting the correlation between columns so what is the regression plot it is used to plot data and a linear regression mod on a linear regression model so uh, we have drawn a regression plot using sns here you can see that i have used x as r and y as score remember that on the y axis there should always be a dependent variable that is a score that is as the number of hours studied by the student increases the scores also increases and then the third input here is the data that is data frame as we have defined above that df is our variable which is containing our csv data frame we can also give title to our plot using plt dot title and here you can see that this title is been represented here as plt <coughs> plotting the regression line and this straight line represents the linear correlation between hours and scores and this straight line is the predictive score on the basis of hours studied by the student and this dot represents the actual score as student so scores so we an analyze that score and are strongly correlated with each other now let us use simple linear regression to predict the data as we only have two columns uh, because a simple linear reg linear regression determine the strength of the prediction and as we have only two columns so that we can use simple linear regression here so at first i have uh, an uh, use x and y and put the values in it so that i could do my train test train test split properly so at first i have imported the train test split from scikit-learn.model selection model selection is a method in scikit-learn module in python so to use train test split first we need four variable that is x train x test y train and y test x train contains the training data x test contain the test data y train contain the column name of the test data while y test contain the column name or variable name for the for the test data and y train for train data then train test split has four input in it that is x y that is the training data the data to be predicted test size it represent that how many or how much part of the data would be used for testing that is 0.30 it's here as 0.30 that means 70% of the data would be used for testing while 30% would be used for testing and random state here it is 0 as uh, or none so what does this mean random state is used when <coughs> so that we could randomly split our data and as the value here is 0 so in every output or how if we run this code again and again then we will get different value again and again because our data is been split randomly then we have important linear regression here and this dot fit method is very important method in, in scikit-learn it is used to train our data set then we in, in this block we have used dot predict as the name suggests it is used to predict the test set data according to our <coughs> model we have created above as you can see that regressor is the variable containing the linear regressor model and we have trained the regressor using x train and y train that is 
data to be trained and the column name of the data then i have stored this predicted value in variable y dash predict and i have got an array with the predicted value input predicted value result then let us compare the actual and predicted value so i have created a new data frame in which i have added the values of actual as well as predicted score that is here you can see that this 20 27 29 is the actual value we have in a data set and predicted score are 17 33 74 and so on let us visualize actual score and predicted score so we can visualize it using scatter plot it has three input here that is x train y train and color that is <coughs> blue then we have drawn a regression plot that is this line which i am marking here shows the predicted value visualization in a graph now let us jump to a graph first here in this graph we can see a scatter plot as well as the line plot here this red line represents the predicted value which our model predict while the blue dot represents the <coughs> actual value in the data set then p as i uh, told earlier that plt dot title is used to give title to our graph while x label and y label is used to name the x and y axis respectively now let us calculate the coefficient of simple linear regression that is we have a equation suppose y equal to c naught plus c1 x then what would be its coefficient here c1 is the slope y c0 is the intercept you all must have studied about linear equation in your high school studies so here i have taken the uh, list of r in x variable by list of score in y variable and i have created the linear equation here that is b not equals to mean y and mean x here our, our linear equation is ready and i have created a new column name as predicted score and <coughs> it is containing the value which would be predicted by a linear model created by us that is our linear equation created here you can see the actual score and these are the predicted score that is a student who studies 2.5 hour a day get actually 21 marks and by our predicted method that is our predicted linear regression or a linear equation he should get 26 marks it's somewhat good prediction now let us see this prediction in scatter plot or with or by a visualization method so at first we have used pat dot scatter and we have input as df score and df head here df score and df head are both from our data that is there is no use of predicted value in this line and this is would be represented by red color and let us label it that here label equals to actual marks as you can see it that as i told that in this line we have nowhere use our predicted value so it is would be said as actual marks in the second line we have also drawn we have drawn a scatter plot and in this the first x-axis would be r while the second y-axis would be our predicted score that means the above column which we have added would be used as y-axis here and this would be represented by blue color now let us jump to a graph here you can see that this blue line represent as i told earlier that this blue line represent the predicted value while this red line represent the actual value you can see that this is somewhat similar and our model is going well <clears throat> now we can now if we need to predict marks scored by a student who get 9.25 who study 9.25 other day although you can put any desirable hours in this input and you can get your value suppose we have the equation y we have the equation y equals to b naught plus b1 into 9.25 that is the r's we have so i have printed the value and here i have got the value as 92.90 now let us categorize the student who passed or failed let us assume that the cutoff to pass by for a student is 40 marks now here i have used df result that is i have that is i have created a new column result and i have taken the 
condition that the student whose marks is greater than 40 here you can see the result of this student of this result column is false and true false represent the that the condition which we have put above is not been satisfied for this student see this student had scored 21 marks and our predicted marks is 26 so the student has failed to pass the exam while this student has scored 47 and actual and our prediction says he will get 52 marks and this student has successfully passed the exam and so on but i think this true or false is not looking so convenient for us to read so let us change the value of true to pass and false to fail and this could be done very easily here you will be wondering that why i have used this line because the output or the data type of the result above is boolean and and that's why to con we cannot convert boolean value to a string so that's why i have first converted this result column as a string and then i have changed two to pass while false to fail now after doing all <coughs> the prediction let's count the result data that means how many students passed or failed so that we could pro uh, we would be used as we would be using this data in the below code <coughs> here you can see that df dot result dot value count give us 15 as pass and 10 as fail now this code now using this code i have made a pie chart now let me explain this chart to you here result is passed and fail data is 15 and 10 so what is 15 and 10 as you can see that 15 are the number of students who have passed and 10 are the number of students who have failed so there is no need that everything in your code should be automatic sometime you can use the result which you have got in your above code in your input in the next code here explode function give us uh, will uh, let me show you in the, this is the use of explode function as you can see this two pie chart it's been separated from each other as we have used 0 0.1 as explored here so that's all for today hope you enjoyed the session if you have any query you can comment below or you can contact me through my linkedin thank you